out here with the 50 Chevrolet. And here's the oil pan. I just wanted to show you guys this. I got a little spatula here. I'm just gonna dive on in there and grab me a slice of this cake. Fling it into the air. And I just wanna show you guys the oil that that's in this motor. Here it is. All its glory. That's that's all that's that was in this motor before we put marble in it. So like this is it mixed with marble. I've been sitting here mixing this for a little bit, trying to get it to like to where it's not just the consistency of mud, like a thick mud. I can somehow mix it with the marvel and hopefully this makes it easy to pour out. So See if I just clear a little pathway there. You can see it seep through. Yeah. So that's the oil that's in this motor. I'm going to clean out this oil pan and put the oil pan back on it. We're still going to have to take the oil pan back off at some point to clean out the pickup and the oil pump. But. Oh, man. <laughs> So here today we got the banging machine. scraping peg <laughs> no lap time accessible only, only one lap time. what was it 13.87 <laughs>
<laughs> Your first lap was 12.41. 41? Yeah. Was that good? <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was better than my lap time, wasn't it? I've been practicing already. <laughs> yeah. I've done this damn 10 times today So we're out here and it's a beautiful day. Uh, it's it's Monday. We're out here with Mr. Jim Groves and his beautiful 1955 Oldsmobile. We know you guys haven't seen this car for a little while, but take a gander at this. He's put it in primer. It's beautiful. What what did what primer did you use on this? It's an Eastwood product. Eastwood. Uh, yeah, Eastwood. Uh, that's the. Is uh, it like a roll-on primer? Yeah, this is the roll-on primer. All right. So you All right. Roll-on primer and. And it looks really good. There's that's the epoxy roll on, and then after the uh, epoxy, then there's a polyester roll on you can put on top of that after uh, you fix all the dings and paint. Get it sanded perfect yeah, and whatnot. Block it out. You got some new blinkers up here. Yeah. They're not new, but they're new to the car. They, I bet. They're original. I'm missing a screw in that. Yeah, one. yeah. I think I got the front. Couldn't find it. Got the front bumper on it now. A uh, different radiator now. Oh wow, these, I like the little street sign stuff you did in there. That's really neat. It doesn't look terrible. It looks complicated enough to where it'd be like, that's cool. You got new horns up in here? I did put new horns in it. That's awesome. Since our other one only made a, one small noise and that was it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everything's still looking clean in here. Very beautiful, man. Yeah, this is awesome. This car is awesome. This is a, now we got a push fan on a, this is a four core radiator. It's still Chinese radiator, but I can tell because of that cap. You chose the cheapest one you could find. That <laughs> yeah, that's really neat, man. I'm liking it. Yeah, the paint really did change this whole car for sure I mean it's it's just a lot better looking with that paint on there it's such a gorgeous day to show it off yeah man where's your headlight at oh uh, that's the one that blew out on me I'm waiting on headlights yeah waiting on the headlights supposed to have been in here uh, Friday and post office said they delivered it and it didn't make it yeah yeah that's right that's right yeah well, awesome. Yeah, we had just, uh, the only reason we're out here today is I was playing with the uh, fuel sending unit stuff. There, he got himself a little uh, Speedway module right here to adjust the homage between the sending unit and the um, fuel gauge. And uh, we were sitting there adjusting it. And we are like, man, it's not reading full after I turn it on. And they're like, well, Jim reminds me that he drove it an hour after filling it up. So we're going to head out to the gas station now and uh, see if it, see if we got that done right. But yeah, I just had to figure I'd bust the camera out and show you guys how beautiful this car is and how she's coming along. It looks so much different with the hood on it and the bumper. And that big old plane on there. That's nice. That's a sweet car. I bet she still sounds pretty she too. Does. Let's hear it. Oh, look at them tail light lenses. He's got a 55 tag. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I reckon I'll see you at the, uh, the golden panty up there. Okay. All right. I What a pretty car.
All right, so uh, just the other day while towing Cadillac of all cars, really heavy one behind my dually. Wasn't just the other day by this point. It's been a little while by this point now, but um, I'll just go ahead and show you guys. A deer hopped out directly in front of me. I'd say this truck weighs about 6,500 pounds. I'm taking it across scales a lot, scrap and metal, and a trailer too. It's about about 8,500 pounds right there. And then the Cadillac, it's got to weigh about 4,500, 5,000 pounds. It's a pretty heavy car. So it's easily almost 14,000 pounds of steel. 13,000 or so it's a, it's a lot a lot of weight of steel rolling down the road it's not that it won't stop like that but you know it's not going to stop quick enough to uh on a dime as soon as a deer hops out in front of it it was wild uh mama deer jumped out in front of us first and it was like whoa cleared both lanes then here comes the doe following and the doe just got hit so it's done a number of damage it pushed my uh, core support back broke my headlight bezel this headlight bezel is only like 65 bucks for two of them new uh, my lower grill molding is a little bent up the grill has a curve to it the um this piece is nice folded I, I forget what this one's called the hood is definitely uh nice my fender it crumpled a little bit right here and uh, got real tied up against this door so the passenger door doesn't open now and um, it did have it did like blow the battery backwards still see some cooling up here it like blow the battery backwards like this bolt impacted the battery right there and the whole battery was sitting crooked in here well it luckily it happened it's only so far down the road so i was able to just drive right back without it even getting incredibly hot because uh the fan had also gouged up the radiator and made it lose coolant so now my hose is up against that so the whole core support has definitely been bent. You can even see it over here where the paint. Paint is cracked right there and it's bent. It's not exactly flat right there. So the entire core support has been mashed backwards. You can see the grill is coming out over here. I'm gonna just get into it. First things first, we're gonna grab it. hands like that it'd probably help my little fingers if I used my sleeves ah So our grill is pretty mashed in there. There's still some bolts holding it in, which is it's, it's not the ideal situation to get into those bolts. 
especially this lower one now. Oh, she's okay. She done broke the clip. Up there too it did as well. It's just that one that's in there holding it right now. It's gonna be just fine. So what's holding you in? No. Just about nothing. So remember this for future reference. This black wire was over yonder. This brown wire was up top. This green wire went to the passenger side. Oh wow, look at that bucket, it's rusted. I didn't know that. Oh man, that's just so sad. Oh, this lens. It's toast. Right there, so that's why they have this stupid screw in it. <sighs> well, that was easy. Now it won't be so easy. That's some of the original color of the truck. It was gold, baby. This thing was gold. That's wild. That's the most original color I've been able to see other than like the engine bay. That's crazy cool. She was gold. Gold as could be. This thing is a little beat. You might could straighten it out. 
clips in it are a little beat. Alright, I'm gonna get back to y'all. Alright, so getting back to this charger over here. It's gonna crawl under here with the old utensils. So we're out here today, we're rebuilding the old front end on the Dodge, putting new everything on it. Look at this, got a fresh tire in there, all cleaned up Good round. AR, man. Can't even see nothing in there. You huh? can see the reflection of it. Uh, look at all them new parts in there. Oh, sorry. You're good. <laughs> all them new parts. Look. We're going to show you guys right quick just how we rebuild the front end on a Dodge. It's it's real simple. It's real easy. It's anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. And it's actually really cheap as well. I got like 25 bucks. Yeah, all I got parts. Yeah, about 25 bucks total. Get all the parts. All the parts. Every bit of them. Uh, <laughs> First, you got to take it apart. <laughs> yeah. Look how easy those bolts are coming out. The bolts are coming right out. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. Some of them are tight. <laughs> gotta get my extension. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We've dumped a bunch of buckets of water in that wheel well by this point. We're mopping the floor and rebuilding the truck at the same time. Yes. This is part of rebuilding the truck. Right. It's all part of it. Chemicals, man. Chemicals clean. Yeah. Rebuilding your chemicals. Looky there, this is just like that, like that, all of a sudden, 
without a whole bunch of effort, you got a brand new upper A arm. Brand new upper A arm. So it's brand new. You need some new shocks in this old babe. Oh, you got some brand new shocks now. Brand new shock bolt. New lower control arm coming in right there. Oh, that frame rail needed patched. Brushing yeah. up the brake lines. All right. Man, looking good, young man. <laughs> looking good. <laughs> ah, that tie rod in was looking a little old. No, it's brand it's new. Almost new, man. But we got the tie rod in used. But it's like new to us because, well, it looks different. New sway bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> new springs because they was wore out. Yeah, the springs was wore out. Ah. Uh-oh. Isabel, how could you? Oh, get that new a on. New sway bar links. Beautiful. This old caliper, man, it's been a little sticky. Going to replace on it. Like right that. Just like that. It's brand yeah. new. Brand new. New brake rotors. You don't need to worry. You don't about need to worry about that paint. You don't need to worry about the Bendix. With the paint, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, let's see. How's it look under there? Brand new. It's new. It's new. So it's been about forever, but we're finally back in the old Dodge. Fixing to go down the road in her. Look at this dashboard. This is typical um, second gen dashboard stuff. We're gonna get a new one. Yeah. We're gonna, one. We're gonna get a new one that does the same thing. No. I'm just playing. <laughs> so we're here at the car wash. We're at the car wash. Car wash, yeah. At the car wash. You're in charge of the quarter. You gotta listen for it. You gotta beep, beep. Yeah. Beep. This is how you sand all the paint off. This is how you destroy clear coat. Alright, so you, sir, now that I got it started, wait till I get onto the hood and grab the damn um, high pressure lift. Yeah, as soon as you get to it. Yeah, as soon as I get to the hood, and just start hitting the top. I think it'll go
here she is all pretty looking in the dollar general parking lot because that's how a, that's where a dodge looks its best is in the dg parking lot I hate Walmart. I really do. It's disgusting. The people who shop there all have illnesses. Because why? They're really good. So I can't tell you how to live your life. But um. You can hop in the comments below and you can tell me how to live my life if you want. It does nothing but help. So, <laughs> as we can see back here, we got a subwoofer next to a gas can. And I'm a pro at driving this thing, man. Look, one-handed operation. This is all because I don't have my forehead mount right now. Now, you see in that mirror, we're Gucci. same kind of stuff where we're working on these cars alone <coughs> crawling under these large objects by ourselves after supporting them on things that we supported them with so it's like just how much regulation do you need before you got too much regulation and all of a sudden it's less efficient than it would have been beforehand and now all of a sudden everybody's driving around 90s cars because it's just the right amount Oh yeah, these fuel injectors, they really do, they really do a number, they, uh, they give us uh, technical data that we can see on our laptop screen and ah, it allows us to fine tune how much fuel we're very so ever so gently inching into the cylinders but now we're so worried about the emissions that are coming out of it that instead of using less fuel we're putting so much extra weight on this car and sensors and plastics and PCBs circuit boards and catalytic converters and exhaust and all the manufacturing that it takes to make all this stuff in the first place. And then, the car weighs more so it has to use more fuel to be able 
to actually go somewhere. So it's like, why would I want to buy a brand new car that still only gets like 25 miles to the gallon when a Honda Civic from the 90s gets 35 to 40 like a damn motorcycle. For there to be so many 90s cars that are still around, they had to have sold a lot of them because that was the 1990 was 33 years ago so I made it in and out in like five minutes because I only bought one item and I walked straight through everything but um we're just gonna go ahead and do an unboxing here right in the parking lot of the Walmart so here's the product right here. It says GoPro right on it. This is the first one I've ever gotten that's actually legitimately GoPrizzle. As we can see in here, it comes with these really cheap little rubber bands. Who knows what these were cut from? And we get this neat little um, clippy thing. Interesting. All this is like 20. $21.38 There's our piece that we need just toss that in there That's why you have your boots. All right, this is that's why you have your boot. You see this I'd be 25 cents more poor if I didn't have that boot right there, so Here's our forehead strap and as you can see it's got these little like psych ward grip sock technology so uh, it grips your hair and pulls it really hard and um yeah we're just gonna go ahead and mount the gopro straight to this yeah look at this now i just put the the hat on Nobody notices that it's there, especially not me. This is uh, very comfortable, I have to say. It's quite uncomfortable with this strap. This guy's just parked right now. He was in and out as fast as I was. He pulled up when I did. Guy's got places to, he's got places to be, people to do, man. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. And you see this floor? It's awesome. Now, fuck this place. I highly recommend shopping at Dollar Tree. They got these motherfucking chips. Woo! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now, you see here, I got maximum, maximum hand privilege. Now, look at this PT Cruiser. Ooh, 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 I'm back, baby. I got my got my forehead mount for my cami my camera and it's the genuine gopro forehead mount i like it a lot it's it's lightweight you know i could flick my head around and i don't feel the camera dongle around or nothing so we're doing great we're doing awesome so far now let's see if i can get into a wreck on camera Sometimes you just want to slam bam these gears as hard as you want because you're mad at the world and this transmission doesn't shift as quickly as you wish it would but that's man you gotta remember with an old car like this you just gotta be easy with her she'll do what you want her to not exactly how you want it to. There, it's a give and take relationship, all right? 